Things are shaking up in Berlin. After years of negligence and underfinancing, German lawmakers have pledged to raise defense spending above 2% of the GDP, along with a plan to inject at least 100 billion euros into a special fund for the Bundeswehr. That's a lot of money, and it comes atop of the annual defense budget of 50 billion euros. Chancellor Olaf Scholz presented the plan in February in response to the war in Ukraine. Now, three months later, the government and the main opposition party have come together to amend the constitution and draft a program on how to raise and spend the money. German lawmakers say it will go towards major equipment purchases to strengthen the country's combat readiness. Germany is getting new fighter jets, aerial drones, armored vehicles, submarines, tanks, etc. But is it enough to make up for years of inadequate spending? Well, that may not even matter. Some ambitions are so admirable, it's glorious even to fail. Today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is one of the top RPG games which keeps adding new content every few months. In all that time, the top 3 most challenging dungeons I've come across are Minotaur's Labyrinth at number 3. This dungeon gives you mastery scrolls for your champions. Dragon Slayer at number 2. Dragon allows you to get speed, accuracy and lifesteal sets. And Spider's Den at first. Your best strategy to win Spider's Den is to focus on Spiderlings. Now this month, an entirely new event called the Path of Light will allow you to explore three branching paths. There will also be some new champions and a set of skins for the amazing Trunda Guild Mallet. Also, Raid is currently running the Liana Chase event where you can get High Elves Legendary Champion Deliana for free. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and July 20th. If you click my link in the description or scan my QR code, you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. A free Epic Champion Tyrell, 200k Silver, 1 Energy Refill, 1 XP Boost and 1 Ancient Shard. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. For all new players, once you're in game, enter promo code MYDELIANA to get 50 XP brews to instantly get Deliana to max level 50, plus a ton of silver. The German armed forces' descent into mediocrity has been nothing short of dramatic. While in the early 1990s it had a personnel strength of half a million, one of the largest in Europe, it has since become a shadow of its former self. Manpower fell by 60% between 1990 and 2019, a steeper decline than in other nations. In the same period, defense spending, adjusted for inflation, fell by 34%. Meanwhile, military equipment was either placed in storage, sold abroad or dismantled for scrap. In 30 years time, the number of German battle tanks fell from about 6700 to 245, while the number of combat aircraft and helicopters fell from an estimated 1300 to 345. And yet, in spite of the declining numbers, Germany's international responsibilities have grown considerably with deployments to the Balkans and Afghanistan. As a result, German resources were spread even more thinly. Years of austerity has left the Bundeswehr strapped for equipment and cash. So much so that within NATO, Germany is nowadays known as a free rider, a country that doesn't pull its weight. But the war in Ukraine has convinced German officials to rebuild the military. The turning point occurred when Defense Minister Christine Lambrecht revealed that the country had not a single combat-ready division, a unit of some 10,000 to 15,000 troops to defend German territory. Only 150 of the army's 350 Puma infantry fighting vehicles are actually operational. 
and only 9 of its 51 Tiger attack helicopters can fly. Less than 30% of the German naval ships are seaworthy, and many of Germany's fighter aircraft are unfit to fly. A parliamentary report on the military dating to 2021 found that 11 of 71 major weapon systems had an operational readiness rate of 50%. A good chunk of German weaponry is simply not functional. Even basic equipment is lacking. Some German units use analog radio systems that are not encrypted, while others are short on ammunition and combat-ready equipment. Decades of neglect will do that to an army. Scholz's 100 billion euros upgrade looks to make things right. It is the biggest increase in Germany's defense spending since the 1990s, and lawmakers in Berlin have promised to use the special fund to transform the Bundeswehr into a powerful cutting-edge force. But 100 billion euros is a lot of money, even for a wealthy nation as Germany. So, how exactly will the money be spent? What are Germany's defense priorities? Well, as of yet, there is no official spending plan for the special fund. But the Germans do have a long wishing list for almost a decade which they haven't been able to afford. So, the details can be filled in based on those previously assessed needs. With that in mind, the bulk of the special fund, 41 billion euros to be precise, will go to the Air Force. Officials in Berlin have long wanted to replace their aging fleets of helicopters and jet fighters. Some of the hardware, its heavy lift helicopters for instance, have been in use for over 50 years and are prone to breakdowns. Now is as good a time as any to replace those. The German Air Force wants to acquire 35 Lockheed Martin F-35 jet fighters, 60 Boeing Chinook CH-47 helicopters and 15 Eurofighter Typhoon jets. These acquisitions will likely take shape with the latest improved versions in mind. A considerable amount of money will also go to researching and developing new weapons, including the Twister system designed to improve defenses against supersonic weapons and the Combat Cloud system meant to strengthen cybersecurity. An unspecified amount will also be allotted to multilateral defense projects. Atop the list is the Future Combat Air Systems program, which looks to develop a 6th generation fighter jet that by 2040 will replace France's Rafales, Germany's Typhoons and Spain's F-18 Hornets. There are also plans to develop new submarine technology in cooperation with Norway, new frigid and landing platforms in partnership with the Netherlands and a new artillery and munitions system in collaboration with Britain. German officials also want to spend 19 billion euros on the Navy. There are plans to procure Type 212 submarines and new corvettes and frigates. But warships can get really expensive, especially with German defense contractors. The allotted budget sounds substantial, but it will only go so far in the Navy. Meanwhile, the ground forces are set to receive nearly 17 billion euros. A good portion of it will beef up the army's assets with Mardar infantry fighting vehicles and Fuchs armored personnel carriers. German officials are also eyeing a successor to the Leopard 2 battle tank, which is supposed to be developed together with France. Berlin will likely go big on heavy armaments like tanks, but it will not be the main focus. The remaining 23 billion euros of the special fund is expected to refill ammunition depots and upgrade cyber warfare technologies across all military branches. Think of night vision goggles, modern radio equipment, backpacks, uniforms, etc. The Bundeswehr is notably short on supplies of all types and the designated budget will help alleviate those problems. If all goes to plan, German officials hope to expand the number of military personnel to 200 and 300,000, which is 20,000 more than there are today. 
By and large, these are the items and requirements that Germany has aimed to have but hasn't been able to finance. Now, with the special fund in place, it can make it happen. Yet Germany's military upgrade is not without controversy. As impressive as 100 billion euros sounds, it might not be enough for Germany to compensate for years of inadequate spending. Schultz's defense plan is just an initial down payment. According to an economics research organization in Munich, Germany must commit another 25 billion euros a year to meet its NATO quota on the long-term basis. And this is where things get interesting. Aside from the one-time 100 billion euros special fund, Schultz also promised that defense spending would amount to more than 2% of the GDP, which is the agreed-upon threshold for NATO. If the Schultz government and succeeding coalition governments keep pace with the 2% defense spending, Germany's long-term military needs will eventually be addressed. However, pacifist sentiment is widespread in Germany. Many are skeptical of the army's capacity and responsibility due to its past atrocities. Schultz's plan is therefore dependent on public approval and political negotiation. If the coalition government breaks apart, the 2% defense spending will have to be renegotiated with new terms and new parties involved. For now though, Schultz's military upgrade is meeting the public's approval. A poll by Der Spiegel found that 78% of Germans support allocating more money to the armed forces. But whether this sentiment will remain in place is unknown. Even so, money alone will not fix everything. Besides political will, Germany has a dysfunctional procurement system. One that is agonizingly slow. Ordering replacement equipment takes years, including for ships, tanks, but also for modest items like body armor, radios and uniforms. It took the Germans about a decade just to deliver new battle helmets for its ground forces. Part of the reason is that German laws permit the losing bidder for a defense contract to challenge the decision in court. Oftentimes that can stall delivery by years and German contractors seem to enjoy suing one another. For instance, an order of 120,000 assault rifles manufactured by Heckler & Koch has been mirrored in a legal battle and still has not gone through. That deal is 7 years behind schedule and still has no end in sight. Still more, the German military budget is renegotiated every fiscal year. Money that has not been spent by the end of the year is essentially withdrawn. So, when a legal dispute stalls for years, the allotted money is essentially lost. As a result, legal disputes result in delays but also in underfinancing. With the way the bureaucracy is set up, it is easier for Germans to supply weaponry to a client on the other side of the world than it is to supply the Bundeswehr. So while Berlin's wish list includes new ships, new helicopters and more tanks, additional political, judicial and bureaucratic reform is necessary to speed up the procurement system. And even then, political will needs to be maintained to hold on to that 2% defense spending threshold. The 100 billion euros military upgrade is an excellent first step, but it is a first step nonetheless. National defense is the first duty of the state, but to have proper defense requires commitment in all areas. Germany may not be interested in conflict, but conflict may be interested in Germany. I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report. If you approve of this video, please give it a like, comment and subscribe. In any case, thank you for watching and Sarol.